Brian Smith. Gentlemen, uh, appreciate the time. Thank you for helping us burn live television. Oh, is that, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad someone's finally being honest on why they bring us in. <laughs> no, we, we were planning on halftime, but we were like, okay, this is one hour, two hours, three hours. So appreciate the time. So effectively seven, seven and a half weeks since we were downstairs for the announcement that you guys are taking over. I mean, when you were, guys were touring the stadium today, kind of seeing some of the changes so far, the march with the match with the fans, kind of what, what were some of the emotions, the kind of the thought process? Well, you know, Brian and I, uh, I mean, Ryan and I did the six weeks ago tour, I think almost to the day, and then came back today. And what the team has done with the actual facility yeah. has been incredible. Um, and so kudos to everybody involved in the organization that really got uh, listened to the fans in, in a ton of ways and worked incredibly hard to put together an amazing, uh, you know, home opener. Um, that said, everything was wonderful. I actually thought we outplayed them for the first 43 minutes, <laughs> and I needed sunglasses, which I wasn't expecting, until uh, the ref started running off the field talking about, you know, weather <laughs> delays. So here we are. Yeah, and, and here it is snowing once again behind us. You know, Ryan, we, we talk about you, you guys. I remember saying specifically game experience, game experience. We, we want this facility for fans to want to come and enjoy every aspect kind of where would you, I don't know, percentage-wise, kind of rate what this stadium is looking like so far? Um, we're in probably in the first 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. good analogy. Like, like, I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty crazy to look at the areas where we were pointing out just, and we were just riffing. Yeah. We weren't even saying, hey, let's go do something. But I think everyone was seeing what, everyone sees what it can be. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, we, we put a little bit of investment, I would say, fairly quickly in. I mean, because I think we all have a lot of ideas, but they cost money. And, and the team got pretty scrappy and, like, figured out different ways to do it. And I think people are starting to experience it. And, you know, I think we're excited. Like, it was fun to go around. David yeah. and I walked around. We, we did the march. We beat the drum. Like, we came all the way around. And um, we're, the whole time we're thinking, okay, how do we – how do we get more people involved in RSL? And um, we've got a bunch of guests here that have never been before okay. from our community tonight. And I think that's a big piece of it. Yeah, getting them in the door and getting that experience. You know, for for Pablo Mastroni, you guys have spoken so highly of him. And I played with him in Miami, played with him on the national team. When you talk about a guy that kind of bleeds and you can feel that passion, he's, he's a culture setter, if you will, kind of on the field and off the field. How have you kind of viewed what he's done with this group so far? Well, look, I, I, honestly, it's a pleasure to both speak with Pablo and then watch Pablo at work. Hmm. Um, he cares so deeply about what he's doing, his connection with the players, um, what he wants to see on the field, how he wants the passion that he has to play itself out in, in what he sees out there. It's just a ton of fun, to be honest with you. Again, we're super early, right? This yeah. is our second game of the season, our first home game. Ryan and I are, you know, having a lot of fun. Um, but when you talk about the leader of what's going on out there on the pitch, to have somebody with Pablo's passion, with his history, with his talent, and, and how he sees the game, um, it makes our lives easier because we just have a ton of confidence in what he's doing, and, you know, it's great. So one of the things I remember saying when everything started to transpire a couple of years ago was, hold on, there's a lot of really good people inside this building that want the best for this club. John Kimball comes in, kind of helps solidify everything. You guys have taken away the interim tag. Kind of when we talk about leadership on the business side, what is kind of, I don't know, the ethos, the idea going forward from what you got you guys want to see from this club well i think first uh, to john you know um coming in he was just named president um what what this organization has done in the last 18 months yeah. um you know we talk a little bit about you know pressure leadership some people call it wartime leadership <laughs> um I, I i wish people could grasp what this organization did in the time where there was a lot of uncertainty mm. and people can handle change people really can but uncertainty is hard and it's difficult for a lot of people and so having been able to watch that with john and um watching him lead through that and then going in and looking at the organization and how it was set up um 
it actually gives us a lot of confidence that, hey, I mean, anyone's a great leader when it's going well. Yeah. <laughs> when you're winning, it solves a lot of problems. Yeah. But when you're actually coming through and it's a little hit and miss or it could go a bunch of different ways, and I think that's credit to Pablo, I think it's credit to John, and that makes us feel super comfortable <laughs> as we're sitting in this and saying, hey, you know, how do how is the organization going to react when things aren't going well? Um, because typically, you know, nothing great happens um, or it, it only happens most of the time on the on the opposite side of a rough patch. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. I mean, historically, for both of you, whatever sport we're talking about, you guys have always wanted to make sure the teams were competitive. And I'm going to go big picture here. When we talk about kind of the opportunity, whether it's an umbrella or a relationship or, or the potential, when you look at this group on the field, um, how important is it to kind of I don't know. Think about what the future looks like in terms of what this team is capable of doing on and off the field. Well, look, it's 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 obviously hugely important. I mean, Ryan and I are really excited about this organization. And, you know, you talked about John and you talked about Pablo. Like, I still remember walking around this arena with Ryan, you know, again, six, seven weeks ago. And Ryan pointed out he's got a really good eye and he's like pointing out X and Y and we can change that and we can fix that. and we can make a better fan experience by doing that. And frankly, John and his team jumped on it. Again, there's plenty to go, but like they did a really nice job mm -hmm. in a short period. But now you start talking about, you know, a longer term plan. And again, look, we're really competitive people who want to win yesterday, today, tomorrow, <laughs> like yeah. obviously. But the reality is, is we also realize that the key is to develop your organization and continue a course of excellence and as it relates to on the field, obviously we had a really exciting run last year, but that was last year, mm. right? And it's kind of like, what have you done for me today yeah. or tomorrow? Um, and what we want to do is just put a really competitive team on the pitch at all times. And that's a function, obviously, of the amazing work done at the academy level. I think you guys all do a really good job, obviously, of highlighting what, what is happening down there, but it's super exciting. Mm. And Ryan and I talk all the time about, well, what else can we do? And some of that obviously is encouraging a wider thought process about where we can take players from. What is the art of the possible? It's really hard out there from a global talent standpoint. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. But Ryan and I would like to continue to add to what is happening here, which I think is a very positive dynamic. Um, both on the current team and on the academy, et cetera. But, of course, we're going to continue to try to improve the team. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of Salt Lake fans that are paying more attention to Augsburg and Crystal Palace on a weekly basis. Yeah, I, the one thing I would add there is uh, Wednesday night, David and I were together in New York, and we were actually at a concert, <laughs> sitting down at a concert. And um, it's not because we're not fun at concerts. It's <laughs> both of us had our phones out. Yeah. The Jazz were, were playing Houston. And the Sixers were playing New York. And, like, I got this on video without Dave knowing. I was just like, what is wrong with us? We're sitting at an amazing concert. We're sitting at an amazing concert. And we both are staring at our phones yeah. in the Watching third quarter this. of our games. So if, it, it, so if I'm a fan, I just want – I mean, that's what I want. Yeah. I want someone um, – to care about the team as much as I do. Invoke those feelings, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think people, like, no jazz fan needs to explain to me what it's like to be a jazz fan. I've been <laughs> yeah. on this ride for Long my time. whole life. <laughs> yeah. Like, I promise I have been there as much as you have. Through every, there's nothing I want more. And it's the same with David. Yeah. And we're bringing that to RSL. Hmm. And that doesn't mean we have unlimited budget. It doesn't mean that other other groups aren't trying to win because timing's really crazy in these things. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he just went through that with, with Philadelphia and the Sixers, right? Like, you followed all of that, <laughs> next thing you know, he's got James Harden. It is, timing is hard. Yeah. But I think that the overall messaging is the competitiveness here is there. Yeah, so, Ryan, Ryan said it perfectly. So the, <laughs> the, the last one, and for RSL fans, I always said, like, this is the ideal group. You guys together, this partnership and what the future looks like. For fans at home, how have the conversations for you guys, if you can, like enlighten us, what does it look like behind the scenes now when you guys are talking about Real Salt Lake as an organization and what this footprint looks like for the Salt Lake Valley? 
Well, look, I, I mean, again, let, there's a lot to be done here. Yeah. It's an amazing market. It's an amazing fan base. It's growing. And you think about the business side of the equation, mm. and you think about the sporting side of the equation, and of course, they play together as well. Yeah. Um, but the reality is what Ryan and I talk about is a culture of excellence. We want excellence in our people, in our fan experience, in, in what we produce on the field and how we conduct ourselves in how we actually listen to people. Like we want people to tell us, and they have actually. Yeah. Ryan and I have been on a few different situations where uh, people have come in with their comments on what we can do better. By the way, we actually want to hear that. Yeah. All right, doesn't mean we're going to make everything perfect in a day, but, but we really want that. So I feel like there's a ton of conversations that we all have um, some more broad and then some very specific and some smaller where Ryan and I are talking about things and some broader with many of the executives. But again, where we're all trying to go is this culture of excellence, both as it relates to the community, the fan experience and what we produce on the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I else? Think, I think I think the the one thing that we're seeing is and you guys have seen a little bit of this and I think it's just starting with, you know, the first social media kind of video with the jazz bear and, and the, like, like, yeah. like you're starting to see the combination of those organizations. We have a lot of the jazz executives here and vice versa. The community's coming together around one Utah. Mm. And I think that is really, really important. That was yeah. the goal. Yeah. And um, I think that that's, that's something that has always, you know, should have been there. And, and I think it's something that will continue. I think the other thing is, you know, imagine a world where someone from my background comes in and I don't have David, right? David brings a soccer experience as well as the operating fan and all of that. But there is a soccer experience that has never existed here yeah. with the connection in Europe. That okay. will take time, but I, I think we, I don't think we underestimate or, or we, we, we actually have grass the influence that that should have, at least looking at a global level, what could come our way. Yeah, looking forward to go. it. Gentlemen, so. thank you so much for the time. Thank as, you. As uh, the team's finally Are we starting. we going to just play two minutes right yeah, now? Yeah, we're really going to play, play two, two minutes, minutes and have another 15 minute break after that. All right, well, that. listen, we love the sport. <laughs> All good. Oh, we're, oh, we're only going to do five minutes of halftime. So five minutes of halftime. Nice. There you yeah. go. Well done. Hey, people are looking out for us somewhere in New York. <laughs> Dave, people are looking out yeah. for us. That's it. Just a quick little text Listen, or phone I, call. I actually really like the way we've been playing tonight. Yeah. Obviously, this has been a long delay, and, and hopefully we can come out and, uh, and keep up that momentum. Um, but it's super fun to be here. Um, the weather is interesting. <laughs> Welcome to Utah. March. March. Yeah, well, Utah in March. Game on, and the fans are yesterday. here, and yeah. uh, all good. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate the time. David Ryan, thank you, guys. Awesome. We'll stick around, and uh, Thanks, guys are warming up. Yep. We'll be right back soon. Thanks. Weather delay, Real Salt Lake, nil-nil. Seattle Sounders here all right. at the right. Thanks.